Well, hello, Hi, everyone. Uh, Sankar, I know you can hear me. Jim, can you hear me okay? Hey, Jim? Steve? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. There's only, okay, three, there's only three of you here, so I'm going to keep everybody's mic open. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and I've got a call coming in here. I I was just talking to Sankar and I said, well, did you have trouble getting in today? And he said, no, I didn't. But um, there's only three of you here, which is kind of, kind of surprising. I, I just sent you a little blurb. I did not get a reminder, but I used last week's reminder and the access code and it worked just fine. So I think the reason there are only three of us here is because they might not have gotten reminders. Mm, interesting, interesting. Um, Sankar, did you get a reminder? Uh, I, I usually don't um, use a reminder. I just go to the website and gotcha. click on register. Every gotcha. Time. Yeah. Jim, are you here now? I don't know if Jim can hear me. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, I, we're going to just go right ahead, and um, you know, I got I get this thing recorded, so everybody's going to be able to 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 play it back and hear it. Uh, you so mean since it's being recorded, I've got to keep it clean? <laughs> I'm going to mute it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think probably it is a good idea that I mute you just just so that we do get a uh, a clear um, recording. But no, 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 it, it's only three of you, so you know you got some questions. Bring them on. <laughs> Otherwise, the webinar is going to be over in five minutes. <laughs> okay, let me unmute you, Jim. Are you there yet? Don't know if Jim's having trouble. Anyhow, um, welcome to uh, the mentorship webinar for Tuesday, February 23rd. I guess a lot of people had problems getting in. Um, we've only got three here, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep talking like as if uh, this was a regular one. Then we'll have it we'll have it downloaded for everybody. Uh, okay, Jim saying my mic is working. I have no audio. Looks to me as though we just have three people, and, that, and that's correct, Jim. We just have uh, we just have three people in the session, so something's going on. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on because it is being recorded and uh, everything looks clear over here. So, you know, I, this is unfortunate because uh, I, I wanted to tell everybody right off the bat that. Uh, um, yeah, Jim, let me, let me just try. Okay. And Jim saying he didn't receive a notice, uh, uh either, uh, next week, next Tuesday, I will be on vacation. I'll be in Aruba and, um, don't have my, um, uh, don't have my computer with me, uh, don't have, well, they do have access to the internet, but good grief, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be doing that when it's uh, 85 degrees and sunny, uh, and I'm not snorkeling, uh, but anyhow, th that, so we won't have, we will not have a webinar next week, uh, and then, uh, let's see, we'll have one the following week, which will be March 8th, March 8th, same time. In the meantime, I hope uh, Citrix gets things straightened out. I see a couple couple more people coming in here. Uh, Jim, I don't know what's going on with your thing. I think the best thing to do is get out and come back in maybe. Okay, uh, on the RUT. The RUT is... Um, we got out of, you can see how the RUT came down here and caught some support and then it's going straight up. And it's, it's too bad because I want to take a vote here today. Um, we got out of the bear call side and um, there, there were some of you that were having trouble getting out of the bear call and I hope, I hope you, di you did do that. Uh, we got a net profit of 80 cents on that one. Now on the bull put, 
we got an 80 cents credit and currently it's at 55 cents so there's a net profit there of 25 cents so we're at we're at 10 and a half percent or a hundred and five percent of what we try to get every month and so the question is so what do we do at this point what do we do um, and, and Sankar I'll get back to you in a second here on the on the new high new low because I think it'll be interesting for everybody to hear that um, the question is what do we do we're, we're at the profit zone but just like I have to make a case to get out of a loss uh, I look also at the same thing for the profit zone and at this point in time I mean just the other day the five and the eight have crossed over the ribbon I want to stay with this I just want to stay with this a little bit longer so since since we're not going to have a webinar next week I will be talking about this every night on the nightly blog and uh, I'll be going up till Thursday on that and then I'm going to be off and I won't be doing that next week either so I think at some point in time we want to get out of the RUT in the next three days some point in time do I want to get out right now I don't think so I don't think so I think I want to just stay in for a little bit uh, so be listening to the blog it might not be until well yet yeah, uh, tomorrow night it'll be interesting uh, you know I'd like to see what goes on tomorrow and we might be pulling the plug on this uh, it, on, on Thursday but you know we'll be talking about listen to the blog okay that's the RUT and, and that's theta trade and that's you know what we did basically is we legged out of that this month and uh, rather than holding it holding it uh, we got out of the one side and now we're getting out of the other side be interested to see um, as a matter of fact let's um, because it from the time we got in whoops <laughs> let's see what happened oh, there it is from the time we got in which was right here to, to today it's gone down and come back up I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we didn't leg out of this we would have been just fine as a matter of fact we would have made the 10 percent on the total iron condor what I'm gonna do I think is um, uh, I'll look at that uh, tonight and see what uh, well we can we can do that right now if you can let's see what we had here was the 1130 the 1120 bear call let's take a peek at that the 1130 1120 bear call 1130 1120 okay and that's still at a dime that's still at a dime okay and then we have the 910 the 900 put and that's still at 50 cents so so there you go we would have um, we would have sold this and if you bought the iron condor back at this point it'll be the same as us legging out legging out and and you can you can tell that when you look at uh, when we got in when we got in was um, the second of February and that was this guy right here right around in here and you can see where we're at that now and that's 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 taken the that's doing what the market does it goes down it goes up okay and and then the sine wave type pattern if you get out right about where you got in that's how you're gonna make a lot of money on theta and once again we've made a lot of money on the RUT 
not 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 so on Amazon um, and you know Amazon and Google I'm really thinking I'm really thinking hard I like that for the diversification but my goodness the RUT has been working so so well for us I think I'm just gonna stay with the RUT Steve I see your hand is up let me mute you unmute you Steve yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, dude. Well, I didn't either. I pulled up last week's webinar. Yes. You know, webinar reminder. Yes. And, and clicked on that link, and it worked just fine. Okay. Okay. And that's that's good for everybody to know that um, th this webinar you can the the code well, there's is. There's only three of us on the webinar today, so a lot of people didn't get access. Yeah, right? there's there's five of us now. They're they're rolling in. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and and if you if you have a invite, yeah, I totally. If you yeah, have, he a, just found out a little bit ago. He's recording it, and he'll be sending everybody a recording. And that's that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, so if, if if you don't get an invite next time, you can always go back to one of the previous ones, and it's the same code. You just come right in. You just come right in. Okay, Jim, I see you're back. I hope you're you're now here in the audio. Jim, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, well, I hear you. Hear you well. Okay, uh, there there you go. We wound up with a yeah, we wound up with a Citrix announcement of of uh, system failure. Oh. And I went back out. Okay. Uh, and came back in and everything's fine. Okay, great, great. Interesting. I wonder if that's why a lot a lot of people were saying they didn't get the invite for the day, so uh, I didn't get an invite either day. Okay. I came in on uh, okay. last week and yep. then was bumped out and came in on the week before and that's what I'm on right now and it's working fine. There you go. And that's what people can do. Thanks, Jim Jim. I'm glad you're in. Okay, Sankar, let me, um, uh, you remember last week, Sankar was saying, uh, uh, you know, is there a new high, new low index? Because uh, we had talked about the Arun, and doesn't the Arun give you all the information you need there? And uh, Sankar, rather than reading this, I'm going to unmute you and, and let you explain what you found out. Sankar, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Dale. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I talked to the things in support uh -huh. uh, for the, the new high, new low. They said that uh, you have to program in Think Script. Uh, there is something in that something called uh, Think Script in Thinkorswim. Okay. Uh, where you can uh, program. It's it's a language. Uh, you need to program there. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I don't want to learn a new language and then write the program. So. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, so I went to the stockcharts.com. Okay. Uh, there is a symbol uh, for the new high, new low. It is dollar US HL5. That's a new high, new low weekly index. Dollar US uh, HL5. Five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and there's one for the daily, which is without the five. So, and then you can match that with the S&P 500 um, and then use that to find out whether it is oversold or overbought. That's uh, how I... Okay, so here's here's the symbol and, and Sankar say this is a five. Um, you go to uh, stockcharts.com and the symbol for the new high, new low weekly is a dollar US HL5. And again, for daily, did you, Sankar, you said dollar US HL? Yeah, yeah, without the five, yes. Okay, okay. And then what do you do with that? So, so when you go to the stockcharts.com, you enter the symbol, uh, the dollar SPX. Mm hmm. Um, and use the period as uh, daily or weekly, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, on the on the there's a, there is a tab, tables below the chart. Um, in that you can um, choose the indicator called price, 
and then add this new high new low index and then if you click update it, you will see both the um, S&P 500 chart and below that you will see this new high new low okay interesting so, yeah and then as per as per Dr. Elder if it is if it is below 4000 minus 4000 okay uh, the market is oversold and then it's ready to bounce and um, and he as per him he back tested this on 2008 also so okay okay what is coming yeah okay now is the, the below 4000 is that, is that on the weekly one yeah the weekly one yes okay what um um can you take a screenshot of that yeah I can I can yes can you do me a favor and, and set that up put on the SPY put on the the weekly and and the daily take a screenshot of that and I'll share that when when I get back from vacation sure yeah that'd be great that'd be real interesting to know because I know that uh, you know like you said before this is one of the ones that dr. elder uses and I think dr. elder is is um, is, is really cool so uh, Anything you can bring in here, Sankar, would be uh, really beneficial to, I think, everybody. Yeah, I'm still reading his books. So yeah. Dr. Van Tarp and then uh, Dr. Elder's book. So well, they're, they're, they're two of the ones that, uh, that I would say are two of the best. Yeah. Two of the best. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. Steve, I see your hand is still up. Let me unmute you again. Steve, did you, did you forget to put your hand down, or? Oh no, 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 no. Uh, you had you had mentioned something earlier on RUT. Yes. That uh, if we had stayed in, we yes. would have made some money. I, I I think it's important to to realize that on about uh, the tenth, when the price was down around nine fifty five. That's all the information we had, On the and tent. I think at that time the best thing we could do was to have legged out, because we didn't have any idea if it was going to go back up at the time. Yeah, it, and, and and you're right. You know, this is this is 2020 hindsight, and then 2020 hindsight is always uh, pretty easy. But um, you know, we did we did when we put this on uh, and we had on the bull put. We said, hey. Let's go down around here where we have some previous support. Now it might get some support right here, but it'll definitely get some here. And and at this point, um, you know, my feeling was that it was going to be heading up. So we we probably it it's a it legging out was a little less scary. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Little yeah. little less anxiety, and that's probably the best thing to do. Yes, I agree. Okay. All right, and and another thing, if you uh, if you're trying to decide whether you want to stay in or not, I I think you might want to look at the next next level of resistance, which is about 10:35. See that previous high? Right That's going to act as yeah. See you. Excuse me, just a minute. Sure. All right, took care of that phone. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, ten thirty-seven around there is. is yeah, yeah. Uh, is I would think Absolutely. that'd be a that would be. See, that's about at the same level as the regression line itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, does the regression line act as a line of support also? It it kind of does. I don't look at it that way, but look here. Um, you yeah. know, it comes up and bounces down. It comes right, up, right. kind of sits there, and then heads on up. Uh, right. Then it comes. Down. This is, you know, I I always have the magnet analogy, uh, but this is the magnet, and and usually I don't look at that as support and resistance. I look at that. It's it's most of the time, Steve. Most of the time, it slingshots past it. Right. Right. Okay. Most okay. of the time. Um, right. Now, when it's coming up. Um, well, I say most of the time, and there, there, you, yeah, there you see one and two, um, but that one kind of, nah, it it does. And the further, the further out of bounds it goes, the the usually the stronger the slingshot past it. So, um, 
No, I, I wouldn't use this as support resistance. Okay. All right. Okay. Good deal. All Good right. Luck. Thanks a lot, Dale. You bet, Steve. You bet. Good observation. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let me go ahead and take that off the chart. And okay. Okay. So let me go into the SPX. Okay, SPX. Um, interesting because uh, you know we had this down here. We did choose to get out of it. I think it made a lot of sense when it when it was pushing up around here. It's kind of sitting there and not knowing what it wants to do at this point in time. We are in bear call region. We are in bear call region. Do you want to put on a bear call right here? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because remember, we look at this and we say, well, you know, what what's the overall position? Should it be a bull put? Should it be a bear call? You know, I can go the other direction if I get a measured move, all that kind of stuff. Then I come up here and I look at this and I say, okay, I'm in bear call region, uh, but I'm not overbought. I'm not overextended at all. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting right in the middle of the regression line. So I'm, no, I am not going to do a bear call just yet. Now, what we want to do in looking forward and looking into next week is just follow this and if indeed we get there there's two scenarios one is it pushes up to around here then i think a bear call makes a lot of sense absolutely absolutely and remember we don't need a measured move if if it's up in this territory so if it pushes up around the the one, I think a bear call makes sense. If it pushes down here, let it go. Let it go. Because it's probably going to, you know, it doesn't have a lot of room, I guess. And, that, and that's, that's my thing. The other thing is this would be, this would be, um, Well, it's not overextended enough, so I, I just let I just let it go if it if it continues to head on down here. I got a feeling that we've got a couple more strong days, and then then we're going to have some weakness. It just it's just kind of the way the market goes, and we've been pretty strong here for a while. But things just kind of crossed over the ribbon, so I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we have a couple more days, and then I think uh, I think we're going to see some pullback. So that's what I would do on the SPX. That's what I would do on the SPX. Another comment, Steve? Oh, Steve, I saw your hand was up, so I unmuted you. That's okay. That's okay. All righty. Um, next thing I want to take a peek at is the ETFs. And of course, the first one we want to look at is the SPY, and you can see that you know it's it's been strong. It's had a strong move up here. Uh, you know, it's above the ribbon. It's kind of holding at this point. Um, it's holding above the five day at this point. Um, I I don't see because it didn't because it didn't push up. You know, real far. I see it's just kind of consolidating here at this point in time. So I wouldn't do anything because it's right in the middle here. You know, on the on the ETFs and the weeklies, what well, we're looking for something that's kind of out of bounds. And this guy is not out of bounds just yet. And uh, you know, neither is the, is the TLT. I mean, the TLT kind of sat there and consolidated, had a big drop overnight had a rebound during the day it's kind of right in the middle of the channel too so I'm not I'm not doing a weekly uh, trade on either the TLT or the SPY Sankar question 
Uh, yes, Dale. So for the for the measured moves, um, how far have you back tested this? Um, as far uh, as been, I know, you've been doing this. As far as the measured moves doing this are concerned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, measured moves probably uh, ten plus years. Wow. Oh yeah. And just Zachary, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> because whenever I try to take the measured move, I was I mean any position I try to take it, it's like I was afraid. I mean it just that to get that feeling of comfortness, right? I mean yes. You know, you just need to. I'm just collecting all the information. <laughs> well, and that's good. And 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 I don't want you to be afraid. So what I might suggest is one of the things that you can do is you can go back and and you know look at. Uh, let's see, for a 15 minute chart, you can go back in there and look for. Hmm, Let's see, how else can I do this? How else can I do this? If I do 15 minutes, uh, um, can I go 15 minutes today? I don't want that. Um, Trying to see how far back you can go to, to back test this. Looks like, no, you can't do 180 days. Can't do 90 days. 30, 20, you can go back 20 days. And, uh, you know, just look at these measured moves and, and just <clears throat> test them. You can test it on anything you see, TLT, any of the... Any of you know the financially strong, you can you can go back and say you know have any measured moves here? Yeah, here's one here. Um, come down here and say, well, okay, let me uh, let me see where that would have taken me. You know, bingo. And and the more you do this, Sankar, the more you do it, the more confidence you're going to have that you that you you see this and when you have confidence in it then you just do it the other thing is when you get in there you want to make sure you know where you're going to get out if it goes against you because this is like anything else it's not 100% it, it it's a pretty doggone good signal a measured move it a measured move shows you a change in direction okay if it's go, if it's changing direction to the upside you're going to get a higher low and then a higher high if it's changing to the downside you're going to get a higher or a lower high and a lower low and when you get that you're going to get a very it's a high percentage trade and then the highest percentage on the Fibonacci's would be the 127, and then of course, then we get the 161. Okay, so just back test it, play with it, try it. Then maybe do some paper trade or minimum trades with it, so there's not a lot of anxiety, and you just kind of say, okay, I would have done this. Let's see what would have happened, and 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 oh by the way, here's where I would have gotten out, and kind of keep a tra keep keep track of it, and and judge for yourself whether or not this is something that you want to do. Okay. Alrighty. Let me go over some directionals. Now, we are in um, a couple calls right now. And um, you can see Gilead Science is sitting here right above the ribbon. <clears throat> I'm getting very close to pulling the trigger to get out of Gilead Science. We have Cisco, and Cisco is pulling back a little bit, but it's been so strong. I'm going to just let this go for a while. Um, 
because I don't see any major moves here at all on the daily chart. So, you know, the only thing I see on Cisco is maybe we're hitting the point up here where we might want to take profit, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep watching that this week to make a decision on that. Qualcomm, Qualcomm is the same thing. Uh, Qualcomm, if it pushes up around here, I might get out. I might get out. See, I'm going on vacation, so I'm looking to liquidate some positions. I don't want to worry about this when I don't have access to a computer. It just doesn't make any sense. So, um, I'm, I'm thinking now about what I might do by the end of the week. You are going to be here next week, so you've got to think about how, how, where you would exit. Danaher, Danaher's above the uh, ribbon, so I'm gonna, you, you just let that one go. If it crosses down below the ribbon, you can get out. You can get out. Apple's the same way. Apple's the same way. Okay, very close to the ribbon. Now, the only thing we have on the put side is Verizon, and you can see that Verizon is, is starting to show some weakness here, and it's always nice to have that put in our portfolio. Okay? So, um, you know, I'll be doing the blog until Thursday. Then I'm going to be heading on vacation. Um I'll be back on March uh, March 8th, and uh, March 8th will be fun because I want to hear from you what you did with these and how it turned out. You're going to be on your own for a week, and I think that's fantastic. It's, it's a good learning tool, okay? Steve, your hand is still up. Let me see if you're there. Steve, you there? Steve doesn't. Steve is is not there. His hand is still up. Okay. Um, any uh, anybody want to look at any other stocks that they're interested in? We were looking at uh, McDonald's for a while here. Let's see what uh, McDonald's is up to. Um, yeah, the it's interesting because. Uh, this is a a reverse trampoline where it comes down where the five the five and the eight are below the thirteen and it comes up and it almost crosses but then it pushes back down. So I think a McDonald's uh, uh, put looks uh, looks really good. Um, let's see, Sankar wants to take a look at Costco, C O S T. Okay, I think we looked at this last week, and the, the only thing I've got here is that it has earnings uh, on the 2nd, which is um, next Wednesday. So that's the only thing I'd, I'd be worried about with the uh, Costco, Sankar. Uh, I'd kind of kind of wait. Yes, yes, indeed, it was oversold. Money flow is coming back in there. Uh, we've got some green here. The ribbon's about ready to cross, but I surely would wait till March 2nd, which is next Wednesday. Okay. And the other one uh, he has is P-A-N-W. P-A-N-W. Okay. Uh, definitely oversold. Uh, money flow is starting to come back in, pull back, but it's the trend is still up. The earnings was the 25th, which is Thursday. So we want to wait till Thursday. Okay, and Thursday, if it uh, goes up and crosses the ribbon, absolutely, absolutely. So those are those are two good ones, Sankar. But I would definitely wait till the earnings on uh, Palo Alto on Wednesday, and then on uh, Costco uh, next next Wednesday, or, or Palo Alto is Thursday. This Thursday. Okay. 
Alrighty. Sankar, another another uh, another one you want to take a peek at? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, not the directionals though. Okay. But again, on the on the on the on the measured move. Sure. Um, there is a difference I see in the 10-day, 15-minute chart versus 20-day, 15-minute chart. So, which one is the is the most backtested for the for the measured move? Mm. The measured moves will they they are the same for the 10-day and the, or the 20-day. They're they're the same. The only thing the only thing the chart looks different is you got the regression channel. Uh, is going to be different because of the time period, but the measured right. moves, the, a 15-minute measured move will be the same depending on what, on you know what time length you're looking at. Right. Okay. 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 Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and um, and um, another question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, generally speaking, on the market. Um, other than CNBC, I mean, who do you follow? I mean, who do you who do you go to for the for the market insight? I mean, general market insight. Uh, I definitely don't listen to the talking heads. Okay. I definitely <laughs> don't do that. <clears throat> I do every morning listen to CNBC just to see what what went on um, overseas overnight, and then I turn it off. Um, and and where I'm looking. <clears throat> where I get my market insight from and what I what I look to is uh, is this guy right here the SPY the SPY a six month daily chart kind of gives me an idea of where it's headed I mean here's here here is a bullish indicator here is a bullish indicator okay here okay. is a bearish indicator here's another one Okay, here's a bullish indicator and another one. All right, it, when you use the regression channels, um, I think the regression channels give are the best tool for getting ahead of the curve as far as where the trend might be going. That's okay. that's what that's nobody has tomorrow's newspaper but this is this is a pretty pretty nice thing on the regression channel sankar i i believe this better than any any talking heads okay got it got it and even even this uh, regression i know there are outliers happen i mean you know sometimes yes um but in 2008 and uh, let's say the dot com bust in 2000 mm -hmm. um, did the outlier keep going down i mean what what I mean, you, you yeah what what you have to remember is and, and we we see it we see it here on the short term more than on the longer term but you know right. as as the price changes and and if the price goes down here you'll start seeing the slope of the regression line changing okay right and and okay. the the um the regression channel worked very well in 2008 measured moves worked very well in 2008 wow yeah absolutely absolutely I hate to say and, it, but uh, in 2008, I was short and had a lot of puts and did quite well. I, I hate to say it, but I did quite. <laughs> you, you know, th that's that's what I'm not concerned about a bear market. I'm not concerned about a bull market because I know I've got. I can trade both sides of the market with the tools that I use. Right. Okay. Okay. And for the for the short term measured moves, uh, you don't combine that with any other indicators like TTM squeeze or no volatility. I, I, I used I used to use uh, Bollinger bands and Bollinger band squeezes, uh -huh. um, and and I found it just using the regression channel on a shorter term with the measure moves is it, it is a more accurate 
indicator than Bollinger Band squeezes. So I've switched away from that. I've evolved from that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, just one last question. Sure. Is there is there is there any is there any books that you recommend uh, for uh, trading uh, measured moves? Um. Very few. <laughs> very few. <laughs> yeah. Um. I was taught this. Uh. I went to a a, a seminar at the Chicago Board of Trade uh, about. 12, 12 years ago, and I was taught this technique, and I've, I've since, I was all, at that point in time, I was also taught the Fibonacci extensions, and um, I have not seen, I have not seen a lot of literature about it. Uh, I know that uh, on, on John Carter's website, he has, he has a woman that calls herself the Fibonacci queen. And right. she doesn't even use it the way I do it. She uses uh, Fibonacci retracements. Uh, yeah. I find that the Fibonacci extensions are far more accurate. So right. no, there, there's not. There's not a lot of information out there. And if you do find something, it might be erroneous. So um, okay, yeah, unfortunately, not on that topic. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. So go to places, Mr. Dale. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and, and back test it yourself, and and, okay. and 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 prove to yourself that it's it's something that yes, yes, indeed, it it makes sense. It makes sense. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dale. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. That was great information. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good deal. Okay. Um, that's all I had to say today. And uh, Sankar, you had a lot of good questions. Uh, Steve, are you there now? Did I, can I unmute you? Yeah, I'm you? here now. Did you have anything yeah, else I'm, you I'm... wanted to say, um, Steve? Well, any other, any uh, other questions or anything? I no, no. I, I'm just fine right now. I just I I, ha I get a little bit of heartburn when I hear you say, "Well, I'm just going to stay in this for a while." Because I don't have your 30 years of experience. And I sometimes say to myself, why is he staying in when he can take a good profit? And that, that may be a difference in our personalities. I'm sure it has a lot to do with our levels of experience. But, um, you know, you, let's see, I wrote it down here. Um, Gilead, you say, well, I, I might pull the plug on that, and then um, Cisco might take my profits, but I'm going to watch Qualcomm for a while. And I, I sometimes wonder, uh, are, are you just saying, I'm just going to give this some time, or when you say, I'm going to give this some time based on some, based on some experience or just I, I, I don't know. I don't have a feel for that. I hear what you're saying, Steve. I hear what you're saying. Uh, well, let's take a look at uh, Cisco. Okay. Okay. Cisco, um, we got in Cisco with the Ready, Set, Go and all that kind of stuff, and, and it's been a, a nice nice little trade for us. And, and at this point in time, what I really look for on an exit is – a ribbon cross okay that's what uh -huh. I really look for and on Cisco I see no reason to get out of there none, oh, none whatsoever okay. right. uh, now when I say I'm just gonna let this go for a while for me Steve by Friday I I'm probably gonna get out of this position because I'm not gonna watch it next week I, I won't have access to it Right. Okay. And, but but what I'm what in my mind what I'm saying is well I've got the, the rest of the week on this, and this is looking really strong. Uh, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Okay. 
Okay. Now, we'll see now, now if, if now you that's excuse the, me for interrupting, sure. but if you look at the left chart here, mm -hmm. it's approaching in the plus one. Yes. And two times out of three, or actually three times out of four, when it got to the plus one, it re retreated. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, you think we might be at this point again? And, and see, I we've made some pretty good profit on this, and I hate to see it, you know, overnight drop down to 25 yeah and and, and I I hear what you're saying now uh -huh. if I were here if I were here all next week Steve then my then my thinking on this would be hey there's no reason to get out there's none whatsoever I don't have a measured move to to gauge anything the only thing I do see is what you pointed out here and that's we're getting close to the plus one but this right. is this ribbon is so strong that I'm and and I'm in a profitable position. I'm willing to let this go for a while. Okay, I've got you now. Okay. 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 All right. Now let's take what was the other one? Gilead. Uh huh. Gilead's a whole different ball of wax. Um, Gilead is not doing much of anything. It's not doing much of anything. For me, for me, I just as soon get out right now. Because I'm going to get out by Friday, and I don't, but I'll, I'll just stick around here because it's kind of not doing much of anything. Right. Now, now for you, or if I wasn't going to, if I was going to be here next week, I would look at that and I would say, I'm going to stay with this as long as it stays, above, as long as the ribbon stays above it. But it's, right. but it's pretty close. It's pretty close, but boy, a lot of how many times have we seen this thing come down and bounce off there? Right, right. So uh, th that's that would be that would be my thinking on Gilead. So okay. maybe I confused you a little bit, Steve, by 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 ta talking about what I'm going to do, knowing that I won't have access to the market next week. And no, I understood. I understood that part. Okay. My questions okay. have been brewing for for quite a while. Okay. Uh, it's just. Uh, it's just. Well, you. <laughs> like one guy said, you you never you never know until after the fact if the decision you made was a correct one. That's right. And That's right. all you can do is is put a little bit of uh, probability on your side and go with it, and what happens is going to happen. It's, you, you cannot control the market. As soon as, as yeah. soon as you release that control and say, you know something, I like the Gilead call, but it, but if the five and the eight crosses below the thirteen, I'm out. Right. Now now you just now you're in control. Now you're in control. Because all you can control is your risk. Yes. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. I've been I've been looking at it from the other side, and I, let me let me try <laughs> let me try on this suit for a while. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good, Steve. That's 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 good. I I, I think that's great the way you continue to um, look at this and you know try to make sure everything's clear, and that's what this is all about. So you know that's great. That's great. All right. Well, I hope you have a fine vacation. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Jim, I, let me try to unmute you here for a second. Jim, can you hear me? I'm right with you, Dale. Okay. Did you have any questions uh, before we uh, call it a day here? No, Dale. I'm, 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 I think you're doing a wonderful job. Oh, great. Well, thank, thank you very much. And, Pete, I see you're here. I don't. Let me unmute you and see if I can... Uh, Pete, can you hear me okay? Hey, Pete. That sounds like Pete. I heard him walking in the background. Okay. Um, let's call call it a webinar today. Uh, like I said, I'll be uh, I, I will be, be be putting on the blog until Thursday night. So be listening to that. Um, <clears throat> take take notes on the positions and take notes on what you do next week because I surely want to hear it when I get back 
and it's going to be good for everybody else to hear it. Um, if you see any trades that you put on, um, be interested in all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Let me, um, let me just, uh, bring this down here for a uh, Let me, let me hold on for a second. I want to show you something. <laughs> let me see if I can do this. Yeah, here we go. This is what I'm leaving. <laughs> This is what I'm leaving. This is a picture out our our backyard, and uh, I'll be interested, uh, you know. And and I'll I'll have some pictures from Aruba when I when I come back. Um, but until then, you know, good luck to everybody. Good trading, and uh, we'll talk to you next not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Bye bye now.